In this video, I'm going to be making a micro ecosystem for some tiny but amazing creatures. Let's get straight into it. I'm using this miniature tank which I made myself out of some scrap glass. It's got a hinged front door which would do a great job at trapping the humidity inside. Now I'd usually start by creating a drainage layer at the bottom of the tank just like I did with this terrarium here. The purpose of this layer is to hold excess water so it's not sitting in the substrate. Where this terrarium differs is that it doesn't actually need a drainage layer. Due to its small size, it's very easy to regulate the amount of water in the substrate making a drainage layer irrelevant. With that said, let's get straight onto the substrate. For this build, I'm using my usual terrarium substrate mix. A quality substrate is always a key factor to any terrarium success, so make sure you use a good mix. I like to use this mix as it holds moisture, is resistant to compression and it provides nutrients for the plants. After pouring in a good amount of substrate, I'm going to gently press it down into place with my hands. It's always a good idea to have it sloping up towards the back as this will help create more depth. With the substrate in, let's move on to the hardscape. I've got this small piece of driftwood which I think can work quite nicely for this scape. It is quite large for this small sized tank but I think it will work really well as a focal point. Plus it goes to show that sometimes a hardscape can be really quite simple. I am using some small rocks to prop it up into place. That's probably the quickest hardscape I've made, but I do really like how it looks. Next, I want to plant a carpet of moss throughout the foreground. I think the perfect choice for this is cushion moss. It's very easy to care for and it's super slow growing, making it perfect for this small terrarium. Before planting it, I'm using some scissors to trim off the base. This doesn't hurt it at all and all it does is allow the moss to sit closer to the substrate, which looks a lot better in a small terrarium like this one. It's much easier to plant the moss small patches at a time and fill out the foreground almost like a puzzle. When planting it, make sure to gently press it down onto the substrate as this will help it wick up moisture and aid in its growth. Just with the addition of moss, this mini ecosystem has already sprung to life. I do feel like the back left corner is a bit empty so I'm going to add another species of moss to help fill it out. This here is fern moss. It's a faster growing species than cushion moss and it's got a nice dark green jungle look to it. I really like how the fern moss looks filling out the background behind the driftwood. Now let's start adding some plants. I've got a few small Fetonia cuttings to add a pop of colour throughout the foreground. As you can probably tell, these cuttings don't actually have any roots at the moment. This isn't a problem though as all I'm going to do is plant the stem into the moss up to the first set of leaves. The cuttings will then grow new roots in no time at all. This is known as plant propagation and the high humidity of the terrarium provides perfect conditions for this to work. Next up, I'm going to plant a few cuttings of Ficus quercifolia. More commonly known as oak leaf creeping fig, this is a slow growing climbing plant which I think will look really good growing up the driftwood. This is about as big as the leaves will get and they stay a nice dark green. To add some more detail and variety in the planting, I've got some tiny Anubius and Bucephalandra. I think I'm mainly going to plant these on the driftwood. These plants are epiphytes, so they prefer growing on things like wood and rocks. All I'm doing to plant them is wedging them in gaps and cracks throughout the driftwood. The last plant to go in is this stunning miniature plant known as Peperomia amarginella. Its leaves stay unbelievably small and they have a beautiful turtle back pattern. I'm planting a few cuttings throughout the scape, but I'm not going over the top as they do grow relatively fast. With the planting complete, I'm going to go ahead and add some details to the hardscape. What I'm using is spiderwood branches, but you can even use small sticks and twigs that you found outside. I really like the detail that these small twigs provide. Before introducing the tiny inhabitants, I need to give the ecosystem some water. When it comes to water in a terrarium, it's very important that you only water until the substrate is damp and not wet or soggy. This is even more important in a terrarium like this as there's no drainage layer. Just remember that less is more and it's much better to underwater the terrarium than overwater it. Now let me show you what tiny creatures are going to call this ecosystem home. These miniature bugs are known as orange springtails. They're a beautiful vibrant orange and as you can see they're much bigger than the springtails that I'd normally use. They'll keep the terrarium clean and healthy by eating things like mould and decaying matter. I'm adding about 15 of them and they really are the perfect inhabitant for a miniature ecosystem like this one.
be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future builds or updates and thank you for watching.